of uh, the film and to see all of these people who put all of their hard work and their time into creating this, being able to see Karen Bryson, who played Eleanor Stone, my mother, to see uh, Silas Stone's story fleshed out, to see Joe Morgan, absolutely, to be able to see all these other characters uh, that didn't make that cut for reasons that should not have been, having that be restored was one of the, my best parts, was one of the best things that I could have seen because, you know, it, it felt like sort of, it felt like justice finally coming around with it. So. Now, as, a, as an African American actor uh, leading the Snyder Cut, because everything revolves around Cyborg, uh, how do you feel? Uh, do you feel like you're inspired for more actors to portray uh, black characters in comics? Uh, I think we need actors of color, not just black, but uh, uh, Latinx. Uh, every kind of actor needs representation in comics. Cyborg represents a who have different disabilities, and that level of representation is something we need across the board. I can't tell you how many people have come up to me at comic conventions and have had either an implant or, uh, or some sort of prosthetic that they're wearing, and they go, Cyborg's my guy because I relate to them in this way. They don't, they don't need to be black to relate to that. But there's also another layer to it, right? Where Cyborg can't take off his costume. People look at him and they see him as a monster. Which Mark Wolfman and George Perez, the original creators of Cyborg, did a really good job in making an allegory for what it's like to be black in America. And having people look at you as if there's something wrong. So I think the fans absolutely want all these characters of every color to be represented. And I know it needs to happen, it will happen, right? We're on that, we're on that path now. I like the scenes in the rain, uh, where Cyborg standing in the rain, those are some of my favorite because A, it tells the story really well, emotionally and picture-wise. And I've also never seen like how they make fake rain happen in movies. And so you step on the lot and they just have this weird sheet that just like pours rain down on you. It was freezing cold, it was two o'clock in the morning. I'm out there in this big suit at that time, just getting drenched on it. I'm like, I love it. Give me more, give me more. It really helped me get into character for that. The drama of it. And also that scene uh, features Cyborg trying to help a single mom, right? Mm -hmm. Who, who's, who's struggling, and that's that hit me like really in the heart seeing that the first time. Uh, one of the hardest things to film, one of the one of the hardest things for me to film, I uh, sometimes is the is the more technical side of things because you maybe ask like, hey, we need to get cyborg flying off, right? And they kind of want you to like start the move as if you're going to fly, and then they cut to something else. Right? Uh, and it feels really weird doing it. You're like, I hope this looks cool. But then, you know, you see it after the fact and they've gone and they've taken it and they've made it look phenomenal. So that's one of the hardest parts for me is just having so much CGI and those sorts of things to do. De las escenas más divertidas que menciona son todas las que tienen que ver con la lluvia. No solamente porque le gusta la lluvia, porque le añade un drama a la escena. Eh, están súper bien dirigidas, es porque él nunca ha visto cómo se hace lluvia falsa. Entonces de la nada veía como un shit inmenso y que caía lluvia al mismo tiempo un montón y se mojaba. Entonces él decía, tenme más, tenme más, porque para él era muchísimo divertido porque lo, lo ayudaba a meterse en personaje. Y por ejemplo, la escena de, en que le da dinero a la, a la madre y al niño del cajero, para eso es increíble porque él cree que ayudó muchísimo el tema de la lluvia a contar esa historia. Eh, y también cada vez que esa escena le llega mucho a las fibras porque es una escena muy emotiva para él. Y las partes más duras han sido todas las que tienen que ver con la parte tecnológica, porque dice que obviamente estás en un traje súper grande, que tiene que hacer trucos con cámara, y le decían como que tienes que volar ahora, porque lo único que él grababa era exactamente moverse así, y luego le cortaban, y no sabía qué iba a pasar, pero luego cuando vio el corte se dio cuenta que todo tenía un sentido. Sí, vamos, a vamos a hacer con preguntas del público y con okay, aquí tenemos uno. Hello. Hi Ray, how are you? I'm well, thank you. It's such an honor to meet you. And welcome to Ecuador. Uh, my question to you is, what was it like working under 
Dax Snyder, and will there be a future representation for Cyborg in cinemas? Sí, eh, ¿cuál fue la experiencia de trabajar con Zack Snyder y si va a haber futuro para Cyborg eh, en el película? Hey, uh, working with Zach is like being able to go and work with like an old buddy you never knew you had. You got everything so prepared and laid out. You know, you just have to step in and you know give it your all, and everything else gets taken care of. Uh, you'll be hard pressed. You'll never find someone who says I hated working with Zach Snyder. That's not. You'll never find that ever. A lot of issues that I've had with Warner Brothers putting out lies in the media about me, and I've got to thank every fan out here because you all saved me from getting buried by these folks. Your, your support, your hashtagging, all of that stuff helped to elevate my message so they could not, so they could not, uh, so they couldn't bury me. So you all saved me from that, and thank you. Uh, there's still a long way to go, and you know, a lot of my friends are still working over there, and I wish them the best on that, but for my part, until an apology is issued, you know, I won't be supporting any Walter Hamada production, period. So, the, the struggle continues, and I love these characters, I love the work, I love these stories, but there are some things, real life is more important, and we need to make sure that we try to take care of one another as best we can, first and foremost. And Zach's already said, but he, he called me first before he told any of the other people in Justice League that they were actually going to do the Snyder Cut. Uh, and I think it was probably for the same reason that uh, he called me to tell me that I got the role originally. It's because he knew how much I flip out. You know, this has been a crazy journey. Uh, I feel I, I feel beyond proud that Zach and Debbie and everyone got to finish that film. But he also knows how much the film meant to me in that process of these characters. So, I mean, for me it was more of an honor. Uh, and I, I felt honored more than anything else that I was the first person that he called. And, you know, we talked about uh, the process once we finished the additional photography for Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I told him, I said, thank you for making this the last memory that I'll have of filming this movie. Uh, it is taking away a lot of the other drama that happened. I'm glad we got to finish it together because we started it together. Whether or not we'll see the return of these characters as that goes through, essentially. I, I'm not sure what the inner workings of how all that goes. I know one thing though, the fans ultimately decide what works and what does not. So whatever you choose to support with your money, whatever you choose to support with your time and your, your attention, that's probably what you'll get more of. So if the fans want to restore the Snyderverse, if the fans want to restore the Snyderverse, restore the Snyderverse! Your voice for keep making yourselves known and you know people have no choice but to listen at a certain point. So I, I'm not sure what specifically is happening, if anything at all. Um, but you know, I'm saying keep fighting for what you love. Restores features five. Eh, bueno, dice que ustedes tienen muchísima voz, que en realidad las personas que están a cargo de las cosas escuchan lo que el público quiere. Donde ustedes ponen su dinero, donde ustedes ponen su voz, las cosas suceden. Así que, quién sabe lo que puede pasar más adelante, y en realidad, lo que más depende de todos nosotros. Ustedes querían ser Hugo Snyder, no es así mismo. Si quieren más cosas, sigan apoyando más cosas.